is going on guys? Welcome back to Boxer Baddies. How's it going? I got my 2018 WS doing full stage two today. Full stage two. How many miles does your car have? 23,000 right now. So we have, uh, is this padded? Yeah, the padded. Yep. Okay. Oh, non resonated who, who makes that uh, downpipe? That's Cobbs, yeah. Okay, so Cobb, yep. um, non resonated but catted downpipe. And then we also have some other stuff here. We have the intake and then the access port. So he's gonna be going stage two on this WRX. This is gonna be crazy, man. Yeah, man, I'm excited. Like, I don't think you realize how different this is gonna be. Yeah. It's yeah. gonna be sick. Oh, so, all right, guys, let's just get right into it. We're going to have to unbolt the existing J-pipe. We're gonna take off the existing intake and it should be pretty smooth and super simple. So let's go ahead and get right to it. All right, so we got Nick's car on the lift here. And looking at the engine bay, uh, you can tell it has been in kind of a uh, northern climate, just because you can see a little bit of the weathering here. But otherwise, hopefully the downpipe is not too on there. He does have all of his under tray and skid plate on, so we're going to have to take all that off. While we're here at the top of the engine, we're going to go ahead and take off the intake duct and the box itself. Get all that out of the way. That way we can make space for the brand new intake. So let's go ahead and do that now, and we'll keep hustling. Shkiet. Okay, so now we have the intake box removed. All you have to do is undo this little eight millimeter worm clamp. Make sure you unplug your MAF sensor as well. I like to leave it in the actual casing of the intake box until we're ready to transfer it over. You can see it's right there. And then there's also a little 10 millimeter bolt here and a nut here, and then the whole assembly comes out. Now, all we gotta do is lift the car up and take off the skid plate and the under tray and we're gonna get to the downpipe, which sits right here. Okay, so now we have gotten the under tray and the skid plate off. All you gotta do is undo all the different pop clips and the actual skid plate itself is held on only by four bolts. Now we can see the downpipe right here. This is gonna be the hardest part just because all of this heat shielding makes it really difficult to get everything out. We also have to make sure that we're very careful taking the O2 sensors out and then we can start getting this thing together. You can see how corroded this is, so it might be a little bit more difficult. It's also very, very hot since he was just driving, so we'll just have to be careful and let's get to it. Now I put the flash on so you could see this. It is very, very corroded here. We might have to use some bolt extractors to get these out. It's gonna be really, really interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pre-treat them with some PB blaster, just some penetrating grease and see what we make out of those. All right, guys, so we are trying to get this stupid heat shield out of the way. Um, all of these bolts are so corroded and messed up. You can see we got frustrated to start hammering them down, trying to get them out, but we're basically stuck um, just trying to get this out. Once we get this heat shielding out of the way, we'll be able to access the final bolt, which is back up in here. And that's all we need to get this downpipe off. And then it's smooth sailing from there. We did get replacement hardware. I recommend to everybody who gets this done on their car, buy the replacement hardware because I'd say 70% 70, 70 of the time, either uh, the bolts are going to break or they're not gonna go back on correctly. So make sure you get the replacement hardware. Grim Speed sells a great set. Um, and then that'll just spare you some frustration when you're getting ready to put the pipe on and something breaks. So um, once we get this off, I'll take another video, but we're just working this heat shielding off and then we'll be on to the installation process. Now at least it's down far enough here. We might be able to just cut this off here. And mm -hmm. then if it has to pass through this way, then we'll pass it that way. So we'll probably cut this right here. Nice. Yeah. All right, so now we have the heat shield off and now we have access to our fourth and final bolt right up in here. And with the flash, now you can see it up in there. Hopefully we don't have to extract this one. It actually looks like it's in okay shape. So we'll check it out. You also have to take this bolt off up here and that one looks good. So let's get those off now. So the bolt stripped, rip in the chat. Got the visor, COVID he got time. the visor, well, the COVID is, protection. This isn't, a, uh, this isn't a metal, but whatever. Is this a Moderna blade or a Pfizer blade? <laughs> this, this is the uh, I'm gonna shitty steer blade. This one. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take cover behind the wheel. Do it, yeah. Oh hell yeah. 
Is that do anything? It's the angle of the dangle. <laughs> oh my god. Actually, you know what? That did something. all we got, you know. <laughs> all right, so we are, what do you think, two hours? Two hours into this Probably. bolt? So two hours into this seems bolt, like it seems like forever, but you can see we have done quite a bit of damage to it there. Um, just <laughs> doing the best we can. So we have a basically a, a bolt extractor that we've been using on some of the other ones we it's actually is it, uh, oh you I used a seven oh he hammered a seven mil on that one and actually got the stud to turn which is good so we're gonna just keep doing that and try and turn it out but that's the first turning action we've had yeah. Yeah. that's a that's a fresh cut yeah bro. i'm i'm freaking oh thanks <laughs> all right moment of truth <laughs> Oh, yo, this whole thing's gonna drop on us. It pop off. It popped off, but it moved. You yeah. moved it. Yeah, I just gotta keep hammering on. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Able to get the Yep, yep. It's slipped. It's off now. Was was that just something just fell? Wait a second. Is it out? I think it's out. Jeez. I'm in a hole. That yeah, hole looks good. That's a nice hole. Yeah, it was nice and threaded. Bro, two hours later. I two and a half, probably. I'm never gonna do one of these again. They're never this bad. I mean. That, it, it had to have been the worst one, which is all the way in the back corner. That's why it took so long, yeah. too. Because I mean, if it was like see. any of these ones, it would be easy. And there it is. Look at that. How many How many miles was this up north? Uh, 19,000. So 19,000 miles up north, and it caused that much erosion. That's terrible. Jeez. All right. Oh, well, how about that one? Oh yeah, let's take a look at that. Dude, that's terrible. I think the gasket's melted in there. Here. Or that's some type of sealer or something. Yeah, we'll scrape that out. That's insane, man. I still can't believe it, that's nuts. All right. Well, now we can start putting on the brand new hardware. Yeah. At least our threads look like they're okay. That's important. There we go. Okay, so I'm doing it. I'm threading it the wrong way just so you can see how it goes. There's only one way this can go, so I'm running out of space there. So when you oops, when you do the turbo side, it has to go this shorter end in. And you just thread that in all nice, just like that. And that's how you do it. So we're going to put in all these. And then we're gonna start putting the actual downpipe on. And if you look inside there, you can actually see the wastegate and the exhaust side of the turbo. Spinny boy. Spinny boy. All right, so now we just gotta make sure the surface is nice and clean. That way we can put our new gasket on there. These fittings are all tightened down. 
And this is the Grim Speed J pipe gasket. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up. And I really like using Grim Speed's products. I've never ever had a problem with their gaskets or anything that they make. They really take pride in what they do. And you can see it has multiple layers there. It's a really, really nice gasket. So we're gonna go ahead and just lay this on real quick. And there's an exact way that it'll go. There it is. Just like that. And then we're gonna line this guy up. Just like that. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and thread these on. It feels so good to like actually use hardware that's not rusted out. You don't have to battle all the heat shielding either. It's a really nice, sleek design. All right, so I like to try and keep this piece because this is really going to protect your um, serpentine belt from the heat that's coming off this downpipe. You can see how close it is. So. We're gonna put this back in place and we're gonna secure it with this bolt. And then I like to use a bolt and nut combo here because we did remove the bracket that initially bolted in right here. Um, so we're able to remove that really big piece here and still maintain our heat protection from our serpentine. So we'll go ahead and secure that in and then we'll move on to the intake. All right, so now it's time to replace the O2. So we're gonna start with our upstream I just have it unplugged so you don't have to worry about it getting all tangled up up top and possibly damaging the connection. All right, so we are now fitting uh, the intake. So I went ahead and insulated this little area here. That way the intake doesn't rattle around and make any noise. We have the intake box in place and then we also have the intake attached to the inlet down there. So just got to put the cone on, make the final adjustments here and uh, secure this guy down put the top box on and the duct, and we're ready to flash the car. Okay, so I installed the cone, the duct, and the box is now in. We're gonna keep lifting it up here, and we're gonna just secure the worm clamps here. I left them loose just so we could position it just a little bit, and then we're gonna put the skid plate and the under tray back on, um, and we'll go ahead and flash this ECU. Okay, so now that everything is done, now what we can do is get this access port ready to go. So everything's preloaded. All we gotta do is plug it into the OBD2 port and turn the car on and see what she does. All right, so we're gonna do a first time installation on this car. And if you wanna see how to mate an access port to your car, check out this previous video. I'll throw it up here. You'll see the link pop up. And that's how, uh, that's how you install one of these to a car. All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and turn it on for the very first time. We are open down pipe because his flange did not match up properly for his cat back. So let's go ahead and do the initial startup here. I'm gonna pull up some gauges. All right, here we go. Testing the car out. Excited, bro. I'm so excited.
actually insane outside. Yeah. All right, guys, so that is gonna end this video. It was such a crazy day getting those bolts off of that stupid turbo, but we got it and he's in love with the car, so super happy about that.